Hello, hello, hello. This is Brian, and welcome to another episode of Talkin' Trash. This is the podcast where the Tin Can Bros talk trash with their friends. And today we welcome a very special friend. We'll be speaking with our good buddy, John Cozart. You probably know John from his insanely popular YouTube channel, Paint, where he creates satirical songs that are just so damn catchy. They're like little musical worms that climb into your ear and you can't get them out. They just sit, th- you just sit there and you can't. I wish there was a word for that. When I first met John several years ago at VidCon, I remember thinking right away, this guy has such a dry wit. He's so funny. He's so talented. We need to make him our friend. And we've been lucky enough since to work with John on several occasions, most recently in Wayward Guide for the Untrained Eye, where John plays sexually frustrated teen Donnie Meadows. Just for a little context, this was recorded back in August 2020. We were also in the middle of a heat wave at that time, so it was hot as hell. I think the temperature in the room John's recording in is in the high 90s for most of this talk. So really just think of this like a conversation that took place in a sauna. And without further ado, let's talk trash with John Cozart. Chips that are not chips, things that are shaped like chips. Yeah, um, I guess they're crackers. Oh, you mean crackers? <laughs> no, I got like, uh, I think they're called popcorners. Oh, it's like they're triangles. They're triangles, and it, they're like chip shaped, but like, they're essentially popcorn. They're like made out of corn. I've had those before. They're pretty good. John Cozart's here. Oh, John, have you had chips? Chips, chips, chips. <laughs> chips, chips. Yeah, I get these special chips from Ralph's. What kind it's of chip? like, I don't know. They're like some kind of Maui. So Maui is in the title, but they're really great. Are they Maui? The bag- they're sunglasses? Do you get sunglasses from? Uh... Mm, no. Okay. Is the bag know. kind of purple though? Is the bag yes. purple? Those like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like sweet onion and. That's the one. That's the one. Those are and good. on the cover of it, the cover of the chip, there's like a tribe from like Hawaii and they're all oh. just we're around with the flavor. Oh yeah, you're talking about, okay, here we go. Fact checking. checking. You're talking about the Hawaiian uh, sweet Maui onion. There she is. Oh, I and think I've like, had this. And yeah. they're yeah. in, yeah, they're in like a, a little, like a Hawaiian canoe thing and they're riding waves. That's the now, one. Did you guys ever used to take bugles and put them on your fingers and pretend, pretend you were a witch? Brian, mm-hmm. that's, the that's like only asking way to... if we were children. Yeah, that's the only way to, eat bugles why else would you eat bugles oh this brian's the the legendary you're gonna write a, the most cliched coming of age movie very soon yeah and yeah. that'll be the like highlight is the it'll be, that, that'll be your quarantine screenplay yeah that'll be your boy <laughs> it'll be so relatable it'll be so specific that people will go this is not cliche it's past cliche it is now just so relatable and speaks yeah. directly to me your boyhood will just be a guy for 20 years trying to fit bugles on bugles? <laughs> and watching Until, the ah! hands get bigger and age yeah yeah Until they don't I d- anymore. didn't realize dogs paws smelling like bugles or like fritos is a thing it's like i've a like never had a dog before i didn't know that was a thing yeah they're paws they just smell like corn chips which i okay. like interpreted as doritos i was like why does oliver's paws smell like doritos yeah Diane smells really corny a lot of it. Like she just smells yeah. like a bowl of nachos pre-cheese. Yeah. And again, I didn't grow up with a dog. So I'm like, I didn't know what like wet dog smells like. Cause Oliver smells like Indian food or like spices. That sounds lovely. John, did a little you, coriander. Do you have any dogs uh, smell like uh, food when you grew up or currently? No, in Texas we have outside dogs cause we're really cruel. So yeah. my dogs just smelled bad. I don't think that's cruel. Outside dogs in Texas? I mean, I don't know, but like an indoor outdoor dog or just an outdoor dog? She was just outdoor. And really? I'm spoken out of turn. I have maybe no maybe I'll get canceled for it. this. It's my my dad should get canceled for this truly. <laughs> we we just had like a mutt who was very sweet. Her name was Sadie and she stayed outside. She and she like wasn't like a like thick coat. Yeah. It was just like a normal dog, like but a, still. Did she have like, a dog house? You know, it's like an outside cat. 
Yeah, she had a doghouse. It's like Snoopy. Yeah, did she sit on top of it and just contemplate like the universe and occasionally pretend <laughs> yeah. she was a pilot? Was she friends with birds? <laughs> nah, she wasn't really an animal person. Oh. Animal dog. Oh, okay. She wasn't. She was, a, she was an animal, non-animal person, dog person. Yeah, yeah. Bird, she yeah. was a little isolated. Wow, that's very special. Mm -hmm. um, John Kozar, welcome to the show. Oh uh, yeah, we're doing a show. We're doing a show. This is. Um, this is what yeah. we do. We do live streams over Zoom, and we don't see anyone in person. I really like that. Is yeah. that the concept? Well, it, it is now. It used to be we go to the office, and we sit in a room, and we talk to them. Um, this obviously yields better sound quality, which is really nice. Everyone's more evenly distributed, but we have so we to. We were pretty it. lazy about miking in person. <laughs> that, too. How's your, how's your time been? It's really, it's been uh, it's good. We're doing fine. I feel like I feel like I need to go get like my uh, some tea right now. Yeah. Okay. Is that shocking? I'm gonna just. But no, it's like in the fridge. Can you guys like shoot yeah. the shit for twenty seconds? Uh, I don't know if we can. <laughs> but we'll try. Try. We'll try. I'm gonna throw it to Corey. Corey, All what's right. up next? Uh, uh, uh. We should have just pretended like John was never leaving. No one's ever done this before. No one's ever just left us in the middle of this. Uh, should no, we cut this we out? Do? We'll um, probably cut this entire section out. Well, no, now that you've said, let's cut this out, we'll have to keep it in. Yeah. No, 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 I'll cut it out. It'll get cut out. It'll get cut out. Oh, he's man, he's back. We'll act hey, like this, let's act like this never happened. Right. So quarantine's been good for you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like mid afternoon. I'm like, I guess I'm done with uh, existing. It's like now it's like 96 degrees or something in LA, mm -hmm. and I don't have AC. So it's, I just spend the afternoons really sweating and just sweating and just existing. And that's kind of how the afternoon goes. But I kind of like that because it forces me to stop. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you so, have any like ice packs or anything that you could just? throw down your back or sit on or anything like that <laughs> no i do i do legit take cold showers like like literally don't even yeah. turn the hot water on just cold That's... and i've never done that but i can't imagine on days like today like yesterday was so hot and i had my ac on the entire day and i was still melting by like 5 p.m oh yeah she's brutal she's brutal out here yeah when the sun sets and it's still 90 that is a hot day it was like 80 degrees at midnight last night yeah. Oh, yeah, it was hot. Yeah. We took out Diane right before bed to go pee, and I was like, it feels like a Florida summer. I don't like this out here. Do y'all have bad, bad dreams when it's hot? Like feverish mm. dreams? No, but when I I've been taking melatonin lately to help me sleep, and I get the wildest melatonin dreams that are so lucid and such bizarre mashups of just like my life and then just like weird shit. So it's like kind of makes sense. <laughs> for a little chunk of quarantine, I stopped drinking coffee and was just drinking tea in the morning for like a good two months in the middle there. And then when I started drinking coffee again, I had crazy dreams. How much I, coffee would you drink? Just like a yeah. cup? Like I, I drink like a cup a day, maybe two if I like in the morning. I definitely was having caffeine dreams and I don't know if that's a thing, oh. but- um, it was I bet it is. I don't really remember dreams. The only time I remember dreams are if I like wake up and go back to sleep, that's when I have like the vivid crazy dreams that I remember. Mm. What kind of dreams have you been having, John? Heat dreams? Um, my dreams never make sense. Usually it's just like a mood. It's like a tone, like how a movie has a tone. Like a that's what I'll wake up. Yeah, it's like I've just watched a movie and I wake up and I don't remember. But last mm. night I dreamt, I don't remember. It was something about dating. That's it. Something I was about dating. dating? Yeah, I was like dating somebody who was really hurt by something I had done. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But she was really pissed. That oh, sucks no. when like life is so stressful in a pandemic and then you try to like get some shut eye and then your dreams are also stressful. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. You need a reprieve. What the hell? I think Have it's also because, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm just watching this, um, this docuseries on Hulu or Ho HBO, Hobo. Right Hobo. now? Hobo Max? Yeah, Hobo Max. <laughs> <laughs> While you're talking to us, you're watching it? No. Uh, just like <laughs> around the time right now. It's like an era of this HBO of this. series. That's yeah, the only yeah, way yeah. to tell time is to say what you're watching or what you're eating. That's the one. That's All one events the are canceled, so there's no way to set flags and for in time. time. Yeah, that's it. What's the series? 
Um, it's called uh, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, I think. Oh, this Patton Oswalt's wife. Wife, yeah. Who wrote the book about, it's about like her, that's amazing. Is yeah, it and it's creepy? It is as creepy as any like true crime I've seen. Like there's the opener of the second episode. I wouldn't spoil anything because, you know, I'm a religious man, but the <laughs> opener of the second episode really just had my jaw on the floor. It was the creepiest shit I oh, shit. ever seen. Like Whoa. actually talking about it, it gives me chills. Y'all should really check it out. It's I saw cool the trailer series. and I went, no thanks. Yeah, not right it's... now, at some point, but not yeah. right now. It's like got me tiptoeing around, like looking, locking things. Uh, yeah, like... we can't, we can't do that right now. It's yeah. not the time. We're watching The Office just because we're like, we need to watch something. We've been so... watching Community. Yeah, just something yeah. that's just like this Fun. will have no bearing on my emotional state, except a little bit of joy. I'll laugh a little bit more. Yeah, do that. I, I, I it's waves for me. Like you know, like um, after the last day of your... Survivor. Oh yeah. Sure. Avatar is a nice break. Um, did, John, do you think it's scarier to be in a in a city or in like a rural place? Like as far as like in the middle of this, you mean, or just in general? No, just, just like in the middle. Like, say there's a serial killer. Like, does it creep you out more the idea of a serial killer in a city or a serial killer like in the middle of nowhere? For sure, rural. For sure. Just because there's no one it else around. It depends. I'm I don't awesome. know, man. I don't know. I, would I don't say, know. Maybe we'll have a serial killer on this at some point, and then we'll just tease it out with them and kind of figure out where they're coming at it from. Maybe we already have, and we just don't know it. Maybe. Maybe one of our friends. I had a, speaking of dreams real quick, I had a dream the other night. It was, we were recording the Wayward Guide podcast, and someone went crazy and, like, had a gun, and it was really scary. And I woke up from it in thinking, like, being chased by that person. And it was, like, one of those bizarre, crazy dreams. But then I immediately got up heard a beeping and went and inspected like all of our uh, fire alarms for the next like 30 minutes in our apartment. <laughs> At like four in the morning, I was like, I gotta get a track of where this beeping's coming from. And I ended up locating it in a closet and it was a water leakage alarm that they have next to, connected to the water heater but the battery's just running out. So then I just stuffed it under something and then uh, I haven't dealt with it in days. <laughs> <laughs> Good story. <laughs> but I just, it was one of those, like, you woke up and you're like, I'm awake. And you're like, and that, like, emotion sort of carries you through. Yeah, that's what kept me up and kept me doing this. And Lauren didn't wake up, and the next morning I was like, you would have been so freaked out if you knew what I did in the 30 minutes I was up, if, like, moving all the stuff in the closet. And I was like, was weird. So, I don't know. That's that. Have you guys that's... ever had, like, serial dreams? Like, uh -huh. you have either the same dream over multiple nights, like a recurring dream, or, like, it's in chapters? Yeah, I have like a version of Los Angeles that's like dream Los Angeles where I can, where it's it's essentially like a Grand Theft Auto Los Angeles where everything's a lot smaller and it's easier to get to places. And it's like, you can see it in your head like a, a Super Mario map where it's like, oh, I'm right here and I'm going to go to Hollywood and I'm going to go down uh, Sunset and I'm going to end up on the, I don't know. That's fun. I'm psyched for when we have um, like AR glasses and we can look at maps of ourselves while we're also experiencing life. I don't know about that. So John, what was growing up in Texas like? Um, good. It's a, yeah. It's, cool. a, it's American suburbia. I feel like unless, you know how people in like the UK, they kind of like romanticize like American high school because of Clueless. Sure. Like, I feel like I did get that. Like I got the sort of envy worthy high school experience. It was pretty fun. What um uh, clique were you in in high school, would you say? Oh, I was like a theater kid, for sure, for sure. High school, I, we were talking about that the other day where it's like, I'm very, I feel very lucky where I was like, I had a pretty solid experience in high school. I was like, I had a pretty great time in high school. And I know that's the, not the case for so many people. Yeah, like somebody asked me why I didn't watch Euphoria. And I just, I just nothing about that show is something that I would enjoy. And, I'm, I, and I think it's because the kids have sex. And I'm like, I just can't have no had sex. I no, well, I didn't have sex in high school, and yeah. no one I knew had sex in high school because Texas, we were very conservative and very Christian, even the theater kids, and so everyone was just kind of making pervy jokes, but nobody would ever like actually commit, even though all of us were like suppressing it and really wanted sure, sure, it. Sure, sure. Anyways, so like but drug that adds use, to it. yeah. 
And uh, yeah, exactly. I I really like that I was like innocent until I Proven totally guilty. went off, the, right? Went way off the deep end in college. And like college is such like a distinct thing because that was like that was my coming of age. Whereas high school, I was this little boy, little boy. I really liked it. I remember the first like college party that was like the summer orientation party we had, and and a ice bunch of people, the ice cream social. And a bunch of people like went up into uh, one of the like upperclassmen rooms of like work to smoke weed. And I being having just graduated high school was like, oh my God, that's like a little too crazy for me. And now it's like, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that I was ever like, whoa, smoking weed with a group of people. I had a yeah, crew but- in high school where we were just like, it would be like six of us and we'd like get drunk and go skinny dipping. And we'd just be like, we're so cool. Like you got drunk yeah, and went skinny dip, skinny dipping. Yeah, we weren't cool though. Sounds we were nerds. Cool. Oh, yeah. but that um, is cool. Like everybody, every high schooler is like kind of lame. I'm glad I had certain experiences in high school because I definitely knew people in college who had never been around alcohol and kind of like went off the deep end in the first couple months. You know, being hospitalized, stuff like that, not understanding what drinking is. Just because mm-hmm. if you're not, we have a lot of people who are on Patreon who are watching this who are not uh, American, and a, a lot of Americans are like dumb just because we can't drink alcohol till we're 21 so there's such a stigma around it and there's such a uh i don't know it's put up on this pedestal we just have a bizarre relationship with it yeah it's a weird thing but now even now it's like it is funny i mean it depends it goes for different people but it's like how once it becomes a thing in your life you kind of just go oh okay i don't really care about like i don't really drink anymore you know yeah uh, it's like I've been enjoying a little bit of it's this terrible Irish whiskey we drank in college and, and I've been drinking that and I'm like this is bad but it's <laughs> like, it reminds me of college yeah, John did you I ever like... have a fake ID no I was a very I was very judgmental of people who drank before 21 really and very judgmental of people who had sex did like you the... ever drink before 21 no I hadn't had a touch of alcohol until my 21st birthday <gasps> Then wow. he would have had to be judgmental of himself. And we can't have that. Can Absolutely we? not. Well, I feel like, I don't know, at least my mindset, I don't know if this is a conservative, like Christian pastor's kid in Houston mindset, or if it's literally just me. But I think like my particular brand of Christianity was very like contingent upon the judgment of others. And that's what mm. sort of kept me in check is this like feeling of ego and superiority. And so... I judged people really harshly and then I was following the rules. Sure. Yeah, that's how I like performed value. Fair. Do you have any relationship with with your faith or religious past anymore? Or is that like gone out the window? It's out the window. No no faith stuff. But I do, I am fascinated by the Bible and, and do read sure. about the Bible all the time and religion all the time. So yeah, it just interests me. And literally all of my family members are very, still very Christian. So it's like sure. a total part of my life. I'm sort of a black sheep, but personally, no, it's not really my cup of tea, yeah. even though I have this like deep longing for it, but I just I'll can't, I can't just kind of, I can't make it work. Yeah. It's like, it's nice to have a thing. It's nice to have like a faith or something, but you realize like how not easy, but how it's possible to get it in a number of other ways that billions of people around the world also, <laughs> you know. Sort of. I do, do you meditate? I, I used do you to. Do you have like any sort of like spiritual thing that you connect with? Um, no, I think this, the most spiritual thing about me is the belief that consciousness is mysterious to the point of being inexplicable it's Mm. like this doesn't make any sense don't know how it works nobody does and that's crazy but beyond that i don't think there's much spirituality beyond just admitting that it's all a big mystery but um Mm. no but yeah yeah i haven't really found a good secular replacement for eternal life (laughs) <laughs> the aside from the HBO life. Max just HBO Max <laughs> yeah. except for that hobo I mean really yeah I don't know I'm, I don't know I'm in a weird spot right now whoa you want to talk about it on this live stream <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I, I'm sure this is so boring to most people so no, dude, I don't know this is what everyone's going through everyone's got I think I think also now more than any time people are feeling bizarre about 
the world and their place in the world. And so I think that's normal. It's yeah. like, remember everything you thought to be true and stable? Surprise. <laughs> remember mail? It's not uh, <sighs> stable anymore. <laughs> no more mail. mail you know, the a- mail always amazed me anyway. Every time I yeah. mail a letter, I go, that's, it's going to get lost. <laughs> and then it rarely does. It's incredible. If I believe in anything, it's the U.S. Postal Service. And I hope this <laughs> makes it on CNN. Get the truth out there, B. Woo! What have you been um, doing to like be creative? Have you found it easy to be creative or? I think the key to creativity is having a life. Mm. For me, it's like finding social, like socializing every single day and like forcing people to be with me. And, and then, then like pulls you up. Yeah, and then I have something to react to, to go and be creative. Cause I feel like I've got some sense of normalcy there and then I'm gonna go and like output. But mm. without that charge, it's like, there's nothing to output. That's interesting though, tanks, because- Tanks are empty. Yeah, for sure. Would you consider yourself then an introvert? Um, are no. you like an extra, no, you're-, you're you would I'm not an extrovert. I don't know, I don't think, I, I don't put much solace in like, I think technically like if we're talking Myers-Briggs, I'm an introvert, Sure. but I, I need people. Yeah, desperately like, need people. Yeah, it's like the like most introverts don't recharge by being around other people, as opposed to like a lot of extroverts who do need like just contact. And being mm-hmm. around people doesn't really matter who. It's like that feeling. Um, yeah, I get it when it comes to creativity, though. Like I'd always rather like write, for instance, in a busy coffee shop than in a completely silent room. Oh yeah, you know what I mean, I just find yeah. it stimulating, and then it like somehow forces me to focus yeah i can't write alone not not that i need to write with someone but i need someone to talk to about it Mm -hmm. so i love working with other people a lot especially when you're both working on different things and you can discuss it with each other that's like my ideal creative like situation and without that i'm like there's no i it feels like there's no reason to make anything i'm like just the fact that someone might enjoy it one day is not a reason enough to like get the work done immediately. Hmm. Like I need to, I need to be excited about it all the time. And That's that hard. Sharing. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. That's why I don't make anything. I'm, I'm, pro- I'm very lazy, which is unfortunate. Like oh. pragmatically lazy. Yeah. I don't Specifically know. Specifically lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> intentionally lazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, and I mean, right now too, it's like, if you don't have the, you live with roommates though. So that's good. Mm-hmm. But your roommates, you don't have any like creative connection to them. They're more not really. Okay. I mean, one of my roommates basically moved back to Houston. The other one is, spends most of his time with his girlfriend in another place. And so I'm alone most of the day here. But it's not this horrible thing. Because really before the pandemic, I was still in isolation working alone. It's sure. just that now everybody else has free time and is also desperate for connection. Before I was experiencing the same thing that everybody else is feeling now. Except I'm like, why won't people hang out with me? It's like, why can't I get, why can't I fill my days with like socially, social and shit like that? And then eventually I've just realized people are busy. They get a lot of like what I need when it comes to like hanging out with other people. They get that from work, from like going in, chatting, being a, a damn PA or like having writing partners and they do that. That's how they get like their shits and giggles with socializing and then they just want to go home and cook and i'm always like let's all do something let's like start board games let's let's uh let's watch tv um I w- i'm like a serial dater so i'm like let's go on a let's date let's all go on dates everybody let's all go on dates yeah <laughs> but now everybody's feeling it too and i'm like oh yeah this is it this is not bad welcome to my world yeah yeah <laughs> it's so <laughs> stark man what are some like board games that you like? Are you a Settlers of Catan guy? Not when really. I don't. I don't ever play it. I have it. It's My great. favorite is a card game, card building game called Seven Wonders. Have you heard of this? No. Yeah. Girl, it is great. It is so fun. It's um, but fun. it's it's done in absolute silence, and you just collect cards, <laughs> and you look at each other, and then you're like, oh no you've waged war on my village and then that's it and then you do another round and it's all silent and at the end you tally up your points and then you're like i won that's the whole game it's really fun you're building like civilizations with like card building and you take different strategies like you could be a warring civilization or you can build like civilian structures or you can invest a lot in science things and like you that do this in silence yeah because you have to concentrate sure 
So it's like a group of people and you feel the concentration in the air. It's really fun. <laughs> that sounds me. great. We should uh, find a time a year and a half, two years from now to get together and uh, play that. <laughs> is it possible sure. to do over Zoom? No, because you need to see everyone's I shit. I think there is a, there's like an online I'm version, I think. There is. There yeah. is. I've played that one a lot with my pals, my B game pals. Whoa. That's also like, have you played um, Villainous? Yes. Uh, I love um, Villainous. It's a surprisingly good game because it's like a Disney tie in game where like you play as the villains. Oh. Um, yeah. And like each villain essentially has its own game. Like each villain has their own objectives. Like Cruella is trying to, you know, collect a certain number of puppies or a like, bunch of dogs yeah, yeah yeah like everyone has like a different game but it's it's a weird thing because especially at the beginning you're so focused on your own figuring out how to like play your own version of the game you're just like ignoring everyone else and just trying to like get your shit situated and then like once things get going and you have more resources then you can like fuck with people sounds like life yep yeah you're just focused yeah. on getting your shit going and then you're like oh okay now okay. i'm like, now i can fuck with people yeah now i can and, fuck uh, Ain't that just the way? Ain't that the way. Ain't that, the way. Uh, that sounds nice. I can't wait to play board games again. We've been playing a lot of just simple card games. Like uh, Go Fish? No, like like uh, Gin Rummy. Oh, yeah. Gin Rummy. Like Rummy like... and then... VC. You play VC? No, what's Bates. VC? It's like Vietnamese cards. Oh. Very freaking fun. That was all the rage in Texas. I can't believe that didn't make its way over to Michigan. No. Is that where y'all are from? No, I'm no. from California. Oh, oh like really none, of us, none of us are from Michigan. It just feels that way because of the Michigan, because of the Stargate thing. I think my know. Wikipedia might say I was born in Michigan, but Mine it's does. wrong. <laughs> we <laughs> got to update that, man. No, my. it's just dead wrong. And it can but just you have an, a Wikipedia. That's, that's, no it's that's super cool. It's wrong. Um, well, maybe I don't. I don't know. It's on something on the internet. Yeah. We I'm all went tried. to school in Michigan, but. Yeah. Um, Euchre. That's like a Midwest Michigan a big, hard game I mean, that I learned while I was up there. My roommate tried to teach me freshman year, and w I played it once, and I was like, I do not understand this. It's like there's lying involved. It's like one I of the few card know. games I've ever played where you just lie to people. I don't know. Aside from, like, poker, role-playing games or poker yeah. and <laughs> other card games. Or, oh, I haven't played <laughs> every I game. Have, have you heard of Sheriff of Nottingham? Yes, I have it on my shelf. Corey. Same. I have not played it. It's on my shelf. You it's go around so fun. getting taxes from bunny people. Yeah, what is this? Are you kind of? Wolf? Well, no. It's like you're you're like you're a vendor, and you're coming into Nottingham, and you have to get by the sheriff because he oversees all of like the people coming in and out. He's sort of like the Nottingham ICE, and you have to sort oh, of geez. there's like a you have to like finagle your way into Nottingham, like, and sometimes you might like be packing some illegal substances that you don't want him to see. So you're just like, here, I'll give you a little bribe. And then you don't have to look into my cart. And he's like, okay, I won't. Or he can or like it. you are bringing stuff in and you like might pay just the taxes on it, like just voluntarily, because also maybe you're like smuggling actually more in. So you're trying to like get him not to check what you're uh -huh. like bringing in. Is it all period? Like, ah, smuggling in ye old crack cocaine. Yeah, but it's not cocaine. It's like, illegal stuff that I and don't like, even remember. And it's also like avoiding just taxes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's tax yeah. evasion the game. It's a yeah. game for libertarians. Yeah. It's literally like greasing the wheels of like the underground market in oh. Nottingham. Through and like, like you trust me, I'm gonna, it's like, oh, I'm gonna pay for this. We're like, you trust me, we're good. Oh. It's really fun. And it it's especially nice. fun if you have some like theater people who will really get into their character. Have you ever played D&D? Uh, have you ever been a D&D person? Yeah, a little bit. I can't, it's kind of hard to get the thing started. I don't know if you guys notice this about LA or if this is your experience, but like getting people to show up is mm -hmm. stupid hard. It's crazy. So yeah. it's a big commitment time-wise to go anywhere. Oh yeah. To go anywhere right now. But, um, but also just to like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a day long thing you have to do, which is fun. What? For like a few hours. Oh, D&D. &D. I thought yeah. you were just like going anywhere in LA. Oh, yeah. You just have to commit the whole day. Dude, I went three places a couple of weeks ago and I like fell asleep at eight o'clock. I was like, this <laughs> is the most exhausting day. <laughs> like, well, I'm just now it's like, if I leave my house, I'm like, oh, wow, a big day. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got tired thinking about going out. Um, <laughs> we're going to cut that out. 
<laughs> it is kind of nice wow. though there being not much traffic to get around Oof. Like, yeah, but it's, it's back bad. it's back i don't know i went to i went to and from the storage unit the other day twice just because i was like oh i forgot something and i went back and and i went this wasn't that bad when i first moved out here i was like i'm never going to be one of those la people who talk about traffic talk about you know, like, all the things the name dropping the what like here we are that's here we all are you do I was like, we talked about everyone's favorite topics, traffic, weather, dreams. Food. When I first got here, my first week, I heard people talking about zucchini squash. And you were just like, like, fuck zucchini squash. Zucchini pasta, that's it. And I was Uh, literally like, is this is a cliche. Certainly they're aware. This is the silliest conversation. And it carried on forever. And I was shocked. And then a year here, and I'm like, that's all, that's what binds us together. Yeah. It's In fact, just, you're making your own from scratch. Exactly. I may, actually legit made pasta like a, a couple oh. weeks ago. It's pretty easy. We did it in like May for, cause our, we did a birthday Zoom where we were Zooming with someone in Italy oh. to like, and they were like doing a cooking like a class. class. But it was pretty funny cause we were all laughing that she had like a fake backdrop and it was just in like Santa Clarita. <laughs> and we we're all like, this is fake. What if she just wasn't in Italy? But it's super easy to make pasta. Yes. You yeah. literally just, it's like flour and water and you're like, okay. And then you mm, fuck with it for a, little, a while. Yeah, it's, it, it, that's it. You like crack an egg in there. Like? I don't know. Oh, zucchini. zucchini. No. Oh. Z- what is it called? Um, Butter squash? Spaghetti squash? No. It's oh, just are, normal pasta. The shape? Fettuccine. Fettuccine. Yeah, that that's was the craziest word to me. That's definitely far from zucchini. Yeah. Nice <laughs> thick flat noodles. <laughs> Zucchini, fettuccine, very different. You're right. What is okay. <laughs> this is super random, but have you ever seen, um, I, I had a, a finger lime for the first time. Have you seen these? Sounds Are, gross. They, it's not, they, it's so oh. weird that it's, it's a lime, but it's like, it looks like a little like zucchini or cucumber sort of thing. It's like this big um, and you slice it and it looks like a tiny little, like the size of a dime, like a, in terms oh, of yeah. diameter and it looks like a little like lime but when you squeeze it out like if you squeeze it out it's all these little like little spheres like the inside are these all these little tiny like and they look like gelatinous but they're crunchy but they're limes almost like uh pomegranate seeds kind of they, they look like something at a fancy restaurant like that you'd go oh what is this like molecular gastronomy like dollop that they have like transformed but it comes out of like this weird zucchini lime I feel like I've seen them as garnishes on drinks for like super. Yeah. I like didn't know that was a thing. And I was like, this is wild. Cause also you think it'll be squishy, but then it's crunchy. Fucked up. Whoa. And then it just tastes like a lime. Wow. Science. Dude, you've you, blown our minds. Do you cook a lot at home right now, John? Or do you, are you one of those, like I'm getting takeout all the time? Uh, no, I'm, I'm doing a little of this, a little of that. I, I'm cooking a lot more, that's for sure. But I do meal preps because I get pretty lazy. You got to do meal preps. You got to like get some chicken for the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I knew one person who was like so into cooking, but they had a very like normal nine to five job. And every night their thing was like, I'm going to try a new recipe from scratch. You got to commit like that two plus hours. And, a like, lot. Just a lot. Per- and to have all the ingredients to like. A fully stocked pantry and everything. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. even have a garlic press. God, that would make my life so much Ooh. easier. Same. Who does? Is it tiny? No, it's just like a little like metal hand thing. Yeah. Okay. I definitely have one and I've never used it. I don't know what it is, but I, kn- I know what it is, but I just don't know what you would use it for. What does it do? It just like presses the garlic. Like, you know, so you don't have to like chop it up and saute it. It's just like a simpler way to. It goes, it's like little so pieces. if I do that and then I can put it right into the pot and then it'll. Problems. Yeah, whatever you want. You can do, that's the thing about garlic. You can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> have you ever just, have you ever eaten just like a clove of garlic? It's apparently really good for your immune system. Oh, no. I love it. Very I good. love all the stinky onions, garlic. Well, no onions right now, guys. Cheese. No onions. No. Recall. Hey. Salmonella recall on onions. Red onions. Oh, that's Didn't sad. Know. Yeah, it's real sad. That is sad. Yeah, a lot that's of- the, That is, in fact, that is, in fact, the saddest thing that's happening right now. In, in the world, yeah. <laughs> in the world. There's I think no so way. too. Um, John, did you have anything you needed to mail in the next couple months that you're concerned about? No. no. I I always fill out my mail in ballot and then I show up to the place and I throw it away it and then I press the <laughs> buttons. I just really love scantrons. You could, you could just 
give them the ballot though. I could, and I would yeah. save time and money. Not money, I would save time. I think, yeah, this election, it's gonna be about saving other people's time, making it so. Oh gosh. You, did, did you see their yeah. Dodger, Dodger Stadium's gonna be a bowling place? Really? Yeah. That's no like, pretty good. But yeah. you know, the Republicans are gonna try to schedule a game at the same time. <laughs> so they're gonna be like, oh, this is, uh, the, the Senate's, the Senate's yeah. going on recess and to, to play yeah. the seasonal fall game. And we've chosen Dodger Stadium. That's uh, a nightmare. I, um, I applied to work at the polls this year. Really? I heard, yeah, I haven't heard back from them. Just like as a someone, whatever they need. Yeah, to I, well, like, it's usually just like random people. Like, it pays, but like, it's only like, at most a couple days. So it's like whoever, it's like a lot of retirees yeah. or like whoever doesn't have like a full-time job. And it's like a nightmare. And I was like, you know what? That's something I can do on the day that will feel productive and I won't like lose my mind all day. Oh, yeah and operational logistics i can do that Honestly, I could like probably better than some people who often are being tasked to do it yeah so i was like that's something i could do for a day yeah oh, and like really cool. and, then, and then i was like oh the covid of all and i was like you know what? i can i could wear a, i could wear a mask for one day like a like a the COVID a, like, of it all like an n90 like an intense mask you, it will probably be great knowing that you just have a distraction all day and you don't have to like be sitting refreshing fucking CNN all day. Exactly. Well, and also like we should all just agree that like we're not gonna call it that no. night, and we that should just not be the assumption ever again that we will call it on the day because that's stupid. <laughs> that is stupid. Mm. The problem here is that the mail is so slow that it will just disqualify the votes. They'll have to change the rules. It's as long as, long as it's postmarked. postmarked it's fine. That's why it like that takes true? time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Okay, never mind. Um, I think the move this year is like get a mail-in ballot and then drop it off. Mm -hmm. I, that's I just the move. I instead of mailing it. It's sort of like how bad does it need to get so that people will rebuke what's going on? I feel like if there is this massive, like legit stealing the presidential election through dismantling the it way already, we vote, it already happened. We're done. Yeah, it right. But it hasn't been so blatant, so blatant, that it's literally, we're going to just throw these ballots out. Or like, we're just not going to let you do it. I think but it's like, like many, it's already, it's, yeah, it's already blatant enough that like, we're, we're there. Like, any further is just cementing, like, any worse is just cementing that as the norm. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's that, that whole idea that, that fascism isn't going to come in like one big act that makes everyone go, oh my God, it happened now. It's like, it's going to oh be, no, it's it's gonna be years of like incremental little pushes, which has been happening, which is like, we're all so fucking exhausted from the last four years that now little cr huge things that are happening are just like, oh, it's just another crazy day here. And we're like, no, no, no. Yeah, it's um terrible. <laughs> oh, there he is. What do you want? <laughs> that's funny um, um brian what are you doing now that you can't uh climb yeah he's i haven't still, been to the climbing he's gym still climbing in quite a while. he's not at the gym oh my gosh you're climbing rocks no buildings uh, flagpoles like spider-man no i've been thinking about going out but i'd have to rent some like crash pads but it was odd because i went from going like three to four times a week and it being just like a great outlet to not having that resource available so i i kind of just pivoted to biking and hiking i've got like one of those uh hand strengtheners but like yeah my upper body's just losing muscle mass by the day you know damn it you need a pull-up bar for sure yeah yeah i mean i would just i mean it's closed again but when it opened i just feel so uncomfortable like being in a public space like that and also trying to work out like that with a mask on would just be so difficult i'd rather just not even engage how about you have you been staying active um yeah, no, yeah, I have a rowing machine in here that I use. Oh, 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 yeah, I I got it off a guy on Craigslist for like cheap, and it is like a water powered one, so it makes a whoosh sound when you. Wow. <laughs> oh. So I and it's really rowers. convenient. Yeah, it's like literally <sighs> like the worst twenty minutes of your life. Like it's so hard, but it's like a very very good full body workout, and, and like, it's done quick. You get like in a rhythm too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Once you learn how to pulse, like sometimes you'll just like zone out and just listen to Beyonce or whatever the hell's on. And then it's like, it feels great. Like dopamine's off, off the charts. 
And then I yeah. run at Silver Lake Reservoir too. I love that place. Oh. Nice. Does it have a little LCD screen with a less stupid like fish game? No, there's no game ever, on it. That sounds Have you really ever played cool. those? There's like no. some rowers. There's like a, it's like a little 8 bit screen, but there's like a fishing game. <laughs> As if it'll distract you from the fact that you're like, yeah. oh, you're like, oh, gotta catch those fish. Yep. And bite. Yeah. No. Honestly, like the rower is so intense that like if you can think about that, then you're not doing it right. That's my, that's me. I think you gotta really, it's really a horrible workout. It's wow. like torturous, but um, it's really, really a uh, good workout. So yeah, I stay active, but I wouldn't go to the climbing gym that often. And I had that subscription and I would, I would try to climb, but yeah, at the end of the day, I just wasn't justifying it. It was just too much of a trick. Yeah. Mm. I like the game of it. Anything like, I'm not a big treadmill person. Like at least when you're like biking or something in real life, you're like, you have to stay focused. So you don't like hit something. Mm -hmm. but like yeah i like just like having something to achieve and then like you get a workout in the process rather than just being like i am just lifting right now yeah the climbing is so fun and it's just the best like date or going with friends or whatever it's like such a blast to like hang out and climb you've climbed and... you've date climbed yes it's like a great time because it makes i'm not like necessarily athletic but it makes me look very athletic <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the person is usually in a, like a vulnerable state where they're like kind of like not in their element, but it's like fun. It's like a, it's like an adult Chuck E. Cheese. And also yes. everybody else is like, I don't know what they're feeding the people in Hollywood, but they're so hot and just like everyone is hot there. And it's just like you're in a hot environment. It's just like a sexy place to go. Um, also, like you spend most of your time time. not climbing because you're like resting or like watching someone else climb. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Climbing is the art of lounging. Yeah. <laughs> I, like you I've, spend I've, more time not climbing than it. I've gone with Brian a few times and it's like the most I could ever do it is like maybe 30 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. It's like, yeah. well, because your forearms give out first. Oh, yeah. And your fingers. Yeah, yeah. Fingers. Someone on a date once was like, I mean, wasn't sure if they were being sarcastic, but they were like, did you just bring me here to like, try to like show off? And I was like, uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> wow. Showing we, them. We did not go out again. Uh oh. For that Weird. exact reason. No, it was just didn't. See, that's okay. like, I could see how that comment could be fun. But uh, if it's not fun, then it's definitely not fun, you know? Yeah. Well, John, it was great chatting with you. Um, yeah. Is there this section of it? anything you want to plug? Um, oh, I did. I'm, I'm uploading infrequently on a second channel just when I what? feel what I want. I like did a Randy Newman cover last week. What song? It's called She Chose Me. It's from it's from a, this musical show in the 80s called Cop Rock, which was like a procedural cop drama, but also Whoa. a musical with music and lyrics by Randy Newman. It's amazing. Is crazy. But there's some of the songs are just beautiful and he wrote this beautiful have, little have song. Have you watched Cop Rock? I saw the pilot in film school, so it's been okay. five years, but I was like, people talk about it all the time because it's like smash cop rock like in the like same sentence but i've never seen it oh yeah it's bad it's so bad <laughs> but it's also like shot like a shaky cam procedural drama they just break into song so it's really cool but not a good show <laughs> no anyways i covered a song from that show that was really just a beautiful little simple that, was a, that was a good plug for cop rock too yeah if you want to check out cop rock there's only one season <laughs> where can people watch that did we say the name of the channel um it's called paint chips it's like paint, but paint chips is I funny. was just going to say paint chips as a joke. And no way. Yeah. <laughs> Great. But not even me. as a joke, just because it is the only name it could be. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. Well, we'll head to paint chips right now. Thanks. All right. Thanks for listening. I don't know if I'm sweating so much because it is hot in here or because that conversation was just so dang insightful. Regardless, this is only part of the conversation. If you'd like to hear our entire talk with John, including a Q&A with our patrons, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash tincanbros. That will also give you access to our entire backlog of talk and trash conversations, plus a whole lot more. Be sure to join us next week when we talk trash with Mary-Kate Wiles. And until then, oh, it's called an earworm. See you next week. Yeah.